Norge har ikke alltid vært like velstående som det er i dag. På 1800-tallet var vi en veldig fattig bondenasjon, og hverdagen på gårder som denne var rett og slett beintøff. Derfor valgte nærmere en million nordmenn å forlate fedrelandet sitt. De reiste over Atlanteren til de store mulighetenes land. Som et resultat av dette bor de i dag nærmere fem millioner amerikanere med norske aner i USA. Nå har vi invitert tolv av disse tilbake til Norge. Og eventyret det starter her på Skagefra. Ingen av dem har vært i Norge før. Alle er like nysgjerrige på landet deres forfedre forlot. De er klare til å gi alt for Norge. Tolv norske amerikanere skal i løpet av de neste ti ukene få oppleve modelandet for aller første gang. Velkommen til Norge! Jeg er så excited og thrilled. Jeg kan ikke tro at dette er skjedd. Jeg er overvandt med så mye glød og happiness. Underveis skal de konkurrere for å få sin største drøm oppfylt. Et møte med sin norske slekt. Knowing that I have family here, I really hope that I get the chance to meet them. It would be so meaningful. Family for me is my home base. It's everything to me. I can't think of anything more significant in my life that I could do right now. Men veien mot målet er ikke uten hindringer. I'm just going to give everything I have and just fight till the end until someone says stop, don't do it anymore. Amerikanerne må vise at de kan tilpasse seg den norske hverdagen. Norsk kultur. Norsk mat. Og det norske språket. A, 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 A. What a goofy, goofy dialect. I don't believe for a second that my ancestors spoke that language. Til slutt står det igjen en vinner som kan kalle seg en ekte nordmann, og dermed inkassere den gjeve prisen. Et slektstreff med sin nye norske familie. Family means a lot to me. I am here to take this all the way. My viking is ready to fight. There's a place where I actually have family outside of this country is just so inspiring. I'm so excited to get there and see and hopefully meet my family. My goal is to try a Norwegian lefse and hopefully it's just as good, if not better, than the lefse here. It's been a dream of mine since I was a little kid to go to the country that I've heard my grandparents talk about. And uh, growing up, we always took a lot of pride in the fact that we were Norwegians, even if we might not know what that means anymore. <laughs> I am so excited, but I'm kind of really worried that I'm going to have to eat something weird like a goat head. But if it's the goat head or my family, um, then maybe I could eat the goat head for my family. You can never have enough scarves and accessories, especially when they look like this. I'm a little nervous about meeting my Norwegian relatives just because of the gay thing. Um, I don't know how they're going to accept that or embrace that, but I'm hoping it's a positive thing. I can't go anywhere without mustache wax, yeah, back up mustache wax, back up, back up mustache wax, depending on how cold it is or colder it is. I think it's going to be a trip unlike any other. It's going to change my life and only for the better. It just keeps getting better. It's very powerful for me to go on this adventure because I do have a few names. There's a lot of mystery still. There's a lot I don't know. Two, three, go, Rafa! I can read a book or I can talk to people about it or try and understand it as much as I can, but until I go there and stand in Norway and look around and see this place where my family came from, I really won't know what that is. 
And so I'm so looking forward to that experience. Love you. I'll have an actual knowing of what it is to be in Norway and what it is to be Norwegian. I'm so excited. <laughs> You're excited. <laughs> have a great adventure. Stay safe. Have a good time. Thank you. Love you. Be good. Oh, well. Okay. Mama. Mwah. Wish me luck. <laughs> Goodbye, house. Hello, Norway! I et av Norges aller vakreste fjordlandskap, Gerangefjorden, begynner det norske eventyret for våre tolv norsk-amerikanske venner. Hvorfor har du kommet? En foss! En foss! En foss! Honestly, I really don't think the fjords could look any bigger than they do from a tiny little boat in the middle. It was so cool. I feel like this is how it started. So we're like going through it just like our ancestors did. Oh, you feel it inside. You feel the connection. I know. It's like we're going home. I felt like I'd gone back in time. My ancestors, you know, the way they found this country and the way it still appears. Like I just step back into their shoes. I claim this land for Viking era. <laughs> I couldn't have felt more Viking. I'm here. I'm so excited. <laughs> we made it. Here we go, guys. Group hug. Group hug. <laughs> okay, folks. I've come so long. But I'm going to go up the corner. I'm going to go up the corner. What? One of the boatsmen said something in Norwegian. No idea what he said, uh, and I don't think anybody in the group really knew what he said, but he pointed up. What? He's pointing up. He said he's, we're going, going up. Yeah, I knew then that we were probably doing something that was going to be pretty terrifying. When I realized we were walking up literally a flat surface up a mountain, I was like, I am not in shape enough for this. But I vowed to do two things on the show. One maybe have to eat meat and I'll do it. The other was I'm not gonna quit, no matter what. You got it, brother, one step at a time. Ooh. Oh, wow, we missed you. The hike, there was really steep places, but it was the most amazing views and some narrow edges that kind of looked a little dangerous, you know, but I like that kind of stuff, so. <laughs> it's fun for me. <laughs> I don't know about other people, but for me, I love it. <laughs> I've never seen a tree like this. Look at that. Birds! To me, Norwegian nature is all about the discovery. It's like a big blanket. What are you doing here? I'm bonding with nature. <laughs> it reminds me of growing up, and I see so much connection here to sort of my happy place. I'm a marine biologist. I'm in the water with sharks, but there are times when I just want to kick back in the woods and just touch the earth and, and you know, the moss and the green. It just brings me home. Hello, Norway. I'm Eric Brunhovland, Norwegian American from Tampa, Florida. I loved animals growing up, and I made that into a career. I'm a marine biologist at the Florida Aquarium. I get to work with all kinds of different wildlife from around Florida, but I'm also known around the aquarium as the shark guy. Almost in there. When I'm up there feeding my sharks, I feel like a million bucks. Because if we lose the sharks, we lose the seas. I consider myself the last Viking in Florida. To me, the Vikings are about exploration and adventure. So what is it you're looking forward to most about Norway? Polar bear riding. I'm looking forward to riding a polar bear. Sounds like a hell of a trip. Thank you, my friend. So, yeah. So. so I'm not entirely Norwegian, but 
I think my life, my culture, my family has really focused on the Norwegian aspect. One of my favorite treats from my grandma is Lefse. My first ancestor that left the country of Norway, that was Hans Hansen Hovland. Then he went back in seven years and he married the captain's daughter, which happened to be my great-great-great-grandfather, Magnus Anderson. The resemblance is nuts. It's striking. That makes me really proud and just kind of connects me all the more. Got the horns. Yeah. It's a pretty amazing opportunity I have to meet my Norwegian family. I want to see it all. I really take the experience with me. Norsk amerikanerne er nå på vei opp de bratte fjellsidene langs Gerangefjorden. Og for en av dem viser turen seg å være en ekstra stor utfordring. Oh yeah, what does this say? You walk at your own risk. When there's, when there's big rocks falling down on you. Ah. Okay, I can't look that way. It's not funny. I'm really terrified of heights. When I was climbing up the edge of this fjord, I clung to the bar or to a rock for dear life. I just wanted it to be done so I could look at the view and not be so close to uh, a perilous fall to my death. <laughs> hey, Stop, do you guys hear that? Yeah, it's falling rock to the back. Cool. Listen, oh, I said. Is it? Oh, oh, fucking epic. Oh, you guys, that's seriously rocks falling. Yeah. There are rocks above us that could definitely fall. We should just be really quiet for real. Yeah, no more, no more howling. Yeah, keep, keep Kyra being serious. The most enjoyable part was definitely watching Travis. The look of being petrified masked his face the entire time. It was fun definitely watching him struggle through it. We're getting, like we're getting closer. Here's the house. It's a hoota. A hoota. After a long tour up the stupratte fjellveggene, are Americanerne endelig fremme på Skagerflå. Welcome to Norway. Welcome home. It feels honestly like I'm coming home. Looking around, I feel like deep within myself that I belong here. Many, many years ago, your ancestors left this country in search of a better life. Not only did they leave behind their homes, they also left behind their families and their friends. The descendants of the people they left behind are still living here in Norway today. And we have found them all for you. <laughs> Greg, how does it feel knowing that right now they're out there? I got this lump in my throat. So it's a very powerful experience for me. And so I am going to give all I have for Norway so I can make it to the end and meet my family. That's my goal here, yeah. Raquel, your grandfather is from Ålesund. It's very close to here. Just knowing that my family is just right around the corner is like anticipation, just filling up. I'm so excited and thrilled. I'm where my hometown is, where my grandfather's from. So to me, that's amazing. <laughs> this farm we're at right now is called Skageflå, and it represents a typical farm similar to the ones your ancestors emigrated from. I would like you guys to have a look around and take in the beautiful scenery. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Amerikanerne skal få tilbringe sin aller første natt i Norge på den idylliske fjellgården. Looks like a ski lodge almost. I couldn't believe that they even built a farm up here. That's the mystery of being Norwegian. Yeah. På fjellgården får oss amerikanerne en liten smakebit av sin ukjente slektshistorie. They have pictures on the outside. Ah. Hey. They look very happy. Wait a second, what? What does it say? It has my name on it. Angela Flatland. Christopher Colby Bach. This is for me. Oh my gosh. Dear Colby, this is a photograph taken of your family from 
Hübecken <laughs> and the elderly couple are Tillerbaki and Olga Oldsdatter, your great grandparents. The little boy they're holding is your no, uh, is their beloved grandson and your father, Ger Tudabake, which is my dad. Cool. Huh. It was my dad. It was way close to... It was way close to home, and so I didn't think I was going to react like that. My dad will, like, love that photo, because I don't think he's probably even seen that, so... Nice. Seeing your dad as a baby being held by people that never got to see him again, it was hard. It says Jerry, it says your name right here. No way. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, Dear Jerry, your family history is intertwined <gasps> with the history of the third house from the left called Belgorton. Third from the left. So Which one, two, one three, it? that one right. No, that's the. Uh, Third one. And yeah. two, three. Three, yeah. Here. Yeah. Do you leave the house in the center of the photograph is the farm that you, your great great grandfather Bartold Andreas Mosling owned? Oh my God! This is this is the one we don't know anything about. It's incredibly emotional, and I'm not a person that shows their emotion. I always think I'm very tough. It makes it almost mean just so much more. I think you know we all want to meet our family, but. You get little pieces like this, it's, it's pretty incredible. I know that my family lived on a farm, so it would be amazing to see the farm that actually belonged to my family. Uh, <gasps> Whoa! <There it> <laughs> oh my God. Dear Barrett, here is a photograph of the rats at our farm that your great-grandfather, Ivar A. Rosef, emigrated from in 1866, leaving his family and friends behind to seek a better future in America. Oh, my God. Wow, it's beautiful. I didn't know there'd be so much crying in this show. <laughs> when I saw the photo of the farm, it's more beautiful than I could have imagined. I mean, just really getting to see it makes it so much more real. It's a real place. It's really here. Do you see yourself having your farm there? <gasps> I've always wanted a farm. Yeah. And that's a pretty impressive one. I just so badly want a chance to like actually be there and to know so much more about it. It feels like just the tip of the iceberg. There's, it raises hundreds of questions, really that I really hope I can have answered as I go on this journey. Hi, my name is Barrett Rodsetter. I'm a Norwegian American and I live here on Manhattan Beach in LA. I'm a hairstylist and I've been doing hair for 10 years now. I absolutely love it because I get to be around people all day long and it definitely fulfills my creative drive. I'm like getting in touch with Norwegian heritage. How long will you be gone for? I don't know, actually. It kind of depends on how well I do. Oh my god. <laughs> I think it's a little surreal going to Norway. My dad is so proud of me. He's always wanted to go himself, so he's a little bit jealous, but very excited for me and can't wait to hear all the stories. There are very strong genes. Every, when I look at these pictures, I see your little face and Brooke's little I face. I know, this looks like Dad's Brooke. face. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's true. Right now in my life, I've been going through a huge transition. I'm 28 years old, and I definitely pictured myself married with a family at this point. And, you know, I, it hasn't happened. So I feel like this is a good time for me to do some self-discovery and a big journey to really see what it is I want in life. It's house. Interesting. <laughs> Has anyone ever had this before? No, but it looks I mean, it really looks like good. something I'd Potatoes. want to make if I knew how. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, you are terrible at that. <laughs> nope.
Efter en krävande tur och mye følelser är er det på tide att amerikanerna får i sig en traditionell norsk middag, nämligen lapskaus. Ah uh, yeah. This is what it's all about. <laughs> are you serious? What are you doing? I didn't know if they had ketchup in Norway, so I brought my That's own because I was like it's, mm-hmm. it's a perfect compliment to uh anything. Anything? <laughs> anything? Anything without ketchup? <laughs> What do you guys think? I like it. Thumbs like up it. on this end, yeah. That's good. I like it. It's the best meat I've had in 17 years. <laughs> so, oh, it's really good. I had assumed I would probably have to eat meat at some point. I would eat meat if the team was eating it and it was part of the experience. Oh, oh. So I, I did eat meat. Does anyone so. remember the name of this again? What, how do you say it? I have no idea. The name of the dinner, I think, was Leps. Lepso, no, Lepsa. It starts with L like Lutefisk, so it's Lob, Schlot, Schlot, Lufa. La, Luce, La Fluce. I can describe what we had for dinner, but I can't say it. <laughs> det er tydelig at amerikanernes norskkunnskaper ikke er helt som de skal. Derfor skal de etter pausen få norskundervisning. Åh oh, nei, du vet det. Humper og går. I know the word hump, but I don't know. <laughs> Are you ready for the first competition in Alt for Norge? Yeah! yeah! <laughs> og for å vinne må amerikanerne søke information hos lokalbefolkningen. I can't say this name. I immediately noticed that she couldn't see, so it was a little uncomfortable. <laughs> Another blonde moment, I guess. Pausen kom 12 norske amerikanere til Norge for aller første gang. Welcome to Norway! I feel like deep within myself that I belong here. Her skal de konkurrere om å få møte sin norske slekt. Knowing that I have family here, I really hope that I get the chance to meet them. It would be so meaningful. Amerikanerne har tilbrakt sin første natt i Norge på fjellgårdens gageflå. Og det viser sig, at de primitive forholdene ikke har vært den største utfordringen. I don't want to name names, but there's a particular roommate I had last night that was like sleeping next to a lawnmower if a lawnmower had a mustache and a viking hat. There is something so incredibly unnatural about the things that come out of him. I've never heard anything like that in my life. I didn't know if it was human. I felt bad for the people back here in town because that had to have traveled all the way through the fjord. I don't know if I want to... He might, like, snap. <laughs> He'll come out with, like, this big hex or something. Good morning, beautiful. I can't help it that you guys weren't smart enough to wear earplugs. You wore earplugs yourself, and you're the one snoring? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez Louise! Do the math. <laughs> when you pop these in and put these flaps down, ooh, the rest of the world just goes away. It's the best night of sleep I had, despite the rumors that are flying that I snore like a freight train, which is entirely true. <laughs> Good morning, Derry. Good morning, baby doll. Hey. Hey. That's that is the first time for me. In a stream? Me too. <laughs> I'm brushing my teeth without you. <laughs> That's freaking cold water. I can't believe that <laughs> the first day we get to Norway, we're like surviving in the wild. I feel we are. Like, I swear, I feel like this is like surviving Norway, some type of like survival show. Spending the night at Sklagafog was uh, really rough because of the really cold weather and then also not having any place to wash your face, to look in the mirror, freshen up or do anything. I don't even know what I look like right now. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Under those conditions, I, I haven't been in before, so <laughs> it was the first for me. Las Vegas, and I am a Norwegian-American. 
So today we're going to do the laser genesis and not do the pumpkin peel, right? I work at a medical spa. I'm in the industry to make people stay beautiful or become beautiful. I care about the way I look. Every time people meet me, they're like, where are you from? Because I just have a look that it looks like I'm born and raised in Norway. It's awesome. <laughs> You excited about going to Norway? It's going to be the most amazing experience I get to do. I'm so happy. We are so, so excited. So happy and excited for you. I know. My Norwegian heritage came from my mother because she is the daughter of my grandpa. He's full Norwegian. Well, this is a hundred year old picture of Olesund, where he was born and raised. My grandfather passed in January of this year. He was always there for me when I was a kid. He understood me and knew me most out of my whole family. And his wish when he passed was to have his ashes spread in Norway. I want to spread his ashes in his hometown, Olsund, uh, in a fjord or a riverway. That would mean a lot to me to be able to do that for him and have that honor. Det er snart klart for den første lagkonkurransen i Alt for Norge. I den forbindelse er det viktig at amerikanerne får lære litt mer om nordmenn og kommunikasjon. Og kurset ledes av fire elever fra Geranger skole. Velkommen til norsk time. Welcome to Norwegian class. Hello. Do any of you know any Norwegian? I don't know much Norwegian, but I can say skål. And um, stort og pikk. <laughs> There is one important thing you need to know about Norwegians and communication. Norwegians do not like talking to strangers. If we have to do that, we keep it as short as possible. In English, I apologize. I didn't quite catch what you just said. Could you please repeat it? The Norwegian translation for this is... Ha! Oh, I think I stepped on your foot. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Oi? <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Paragraph long conversations in English, when said in Norwegian, can be summarized to basically one sound. <laughs> Apparently, the Norwegians don't have a lot of time for small talk. <laughs> now let's try reading a bit. Let me teach you something here. <laughs> Trollmore, Tramper, uh, Burget. That blue. Blue? Yep, blue. Oh. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Trofar, trawler, for sin. Sme. Sme. The Norwegian language, it's like all in the back of the throat. Ra and schwa and oi, oi. It just seems like there's just emphasis in everything. It's like, and not, but not German, just playful and fun. I, I don't know, I just, I wish I could know it better so I could do that I'm Jorgen Karlsrud, and I'm from Yevnaket. Ah. <laughs> Where are you from? Yevnaket. I am the epitome of awesome. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just an easygoing guy. Stars in the sky. Single life is, at times, the best thing in the world. I can do whatever I want. I can go wherever I want. My dream girl is tall but not taller than me because that would be weird thin beautiful blonde hair blue eyes whoa Did that make me sound like a scumbag i hope not <laughs> hey good good come on in my family means the absolute world to me it is a little hard to read but it says jorgen karlsrud your grandfather made that trunk. We found that his real name was Jorgen, and that's how we came up with your name. 
That's so cool. Yeah. It's becoming more and more important for me to know about my family's roots and our history. Have a good time. Thank you. <laughs> Love you. I expect this trip to really open my eyes. My number one goal is to meet my family. And if I meet a beautiful woman along the way, extra bonus. <laughs> På Garanger skole har norskamerikanerne fått utdelt bøker med vanlige norske ord og fraser. Nå skal de, to og to, prøve seg på noen typisk norske samtaler. Hvordan står det til her da? Å nei, du vet det. Humper og går. Jeg har ikke noe idé. Jeg har ikke noe idé hva det betyr. Men jeg vet ordet hump, men jeg vet ikke. I don't know if that's... I don't think that's what the kids were probably teaching us. Det var da sannelig en flott hat. Zsajeg fik den av min tant. So that means that was a really nice hat. I got hat. And you said, yes, I got it from my aunt. Here. Go over. Det var da sannelig en flott hat. In the class today, I learned how to say thanks for helping me, which is tusen, no, which is talk for yelping. Injenting po, no, injenting po, fuck, what was it? Jaye did their freak them bra? I think, I don't remember. Onai duvet. Humper Ogor. Onai Duvet. Die? No. Onai Duvet De Humper Dugor. Ogor. Okay. Hi, I'm Christopher Colby Bakke, and I'm a Norwegian American. One thing people will learn very quickly about me is that I am gay, and I'm out, and I have a very supportive family and friends. Kim Kardashian, pregnant, and then Tom Cruise, new leading lady, another way to cover up his homosexuality. I used to be a lot thinner. A couple years ago, I went into the emergency room because I had severe head pain and I had five blood clots and I wouldn't have made it to the next morning if they hadn't brought me in. I got depressed. I started to gain weight, which was not like me. Now I'm back in the gym and I feel very motivated. I'm eating way healthier. I feel like I'm getting my old life back. My dad was born in Lillehammer, and he came over with my grandparents on a boat. We really regretfully didn't have a lot of traditions, and we grew up without that. And I think that's what makes this so much more appealing, to be able to go experience and bring that knowledge back. I want to make my family proud, and I think that when it comes to challenges, they're not going to expect that the princess will get down and dirty. Norge er et konstitusjonelt monarki, og det vil si at vi har en regjering som styres av en statsminister, og så har vi en kongefamilie. Og den første konkurransen i Alt for Norge skal handle om nettopp de som styrer landet vårt. Før var Norge et enevelde, og de som styrte landet vårt var konger med mye hår og mye makt. I dag har kongen langt mindre hår og langt mindre makt. Med innføringen av parlamentarismen i 1884 fikk nemlig storting og regjering den formelle makten i Norge. Det vil si at vi har en statsminister som bestemmer, i alle fall så lenge han passer på å bestemme ting som de andre i Stortinget er sånn noenlunde enig. Ellers er det å være statsminister i et av verdens beste land å bo i en ganske takknemlig jobb, siden norske velgere stort sett er fornøyd med hvor bra vi har det her til lands. Hvert fjerde år er det valg i Norge. Da får vi en ny statsminister, og vi får nye opposisjonspolitikere som kan fortsette å stikke kjepper i hjulene. 
Men kongen har med aldrig på valg og fortsätter ufortrødent videre med sine viktige plikter. It's time for the very first competition in Alt for Norge. In this challenge, there's a lot at stake. The team that wins will be granted immunity in next week's challenges. I can tell you one thing about this competition. They are not going to throw anything simple at us because the reward for this is so grand. Two more weeks in Norway. So excited about so passionate about winning that I know it's not going to be easy. Norske amerikanerne er delt i tre lag. Nå skal de finne ut så mye som mulig om den norske kongefamilien og statsministerne de siste 30 årene. Are you ready for the first competition in Alt for Norge? Yes! Yeah! Are you ready to fight like Vikings? Yeah! I'm definitely a little nervous. I think each team has really a lot of strength, so it's going to be interesting to see what everybody's strategies are and who pulls it off. Klar? Ferdig? Go! Bye! Good luck! Should we assess the book? On the way? No, what does it say? What does it say? Hold. Sonia. For Blottlag finner vi Travis, Angela, Liv og Colby. I'm not nervous about today's competition. I love uh, tabloids. I usually know everything about every celebrity, so I'm hoping to use my memory to do well. Do you want to start with uh, Royal Family or Prime Ministers? Rødt lag består av Greg, Jorgen, Jerry og Raquel. Mens på hvitt lag finner vi Eric, Andy, Karak og Barrett. We did learn that Norwegians don't really like talking to strangers, so I think it's very important for us to approach calm, cool, sort of nonchalant. Hey, kan du snakke engelsk? Because we have a tendency as Americans to be like a little bit loud and obnoxious. Is there someone here we can meet? Hi, I'm Eric. First lady we met. Really nice lady, cute little boy. Maybe that's why we caught her, because she couldn't run away with a carriage. And she was so helpful. Okay, so Marta, what do you know about her? Uh, she's actually my age. She's uh, okay. 29. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we were filled with knowledge. We couldn't have started stronger. Marta, what does she do? She believes in angels. Oh, angels! angels. She likes Marta? angels? She believes in angels, that there is mm. something beyond us, or okay. like yeah. a heaven. Kind yeah, of or, thing. or that. When I first heard about Martha and the angels, in the US we would call that hippie. So I thought it was kind of strange. Met Marit was uh, a going and uh, partying lot. Met Marit might be a little bit of a party girl. I think it's great that Hakon married a common woman. It keeps that dream alive for every little girl that maybe someday you could be a princess. Can we uh, ask you guys some questions? What do they look like? Mathematics yeah. has blonde hair. Is she pretty? Yes. Yes, okay. We tried to find out how people looked. What does Hawken look like? Dark hair. Does Harold still have his hair? Mm, or any of them? Not, not much hair. Not much hair? <laughs> Bald okay. What did he look like? Blue eyes, um... Uh, the, like, what, let's, was let's, he tall? Sweetheart? Uh, no, not okay, let's, okay, let's go on. Grow Harlow. We're supposed to know about each one of them. Yes, um, we didn't do Thorbin, though. With the information and how we gathered it, it's very scattered. <laughs> we have little words and then lines across pages, and we were kind of jumping around with the questions. Medi Modit. How do you feel about Medi Modit? Is she more popular now than the, in the beginning? We got three people trying to write things down, but yet we don't know where everybody's at, so we could have been a little bit better prepared. I need to know what you know because I have a lot of questions to ask okay. people, okay. and if you already know some certain things, then I need to know because I want okay. to know I, what kind I, of hair they have. Mens det røde laget prøver å rydde opp i notatene sine, møter blått lag på en uventet utfordring. Unnskyld, snakker du engelsk? En engelsk. En engelsk. Along the way, we did encounter two older women, and I immediately noticed that one of them had a cane that would let you know that she couldn't see, and she also had glasses on, and someone was helping her. We're learning about your prime ministers and royalty, yeah, and Stolberg. <laughs> What's he like? What does he look like? What is... Yes, I think he's a good man. Good man? 
I wasn't able to tell my team yet that don't show them the book. Um, so Angela began to talk to her and tried to kind of show her the book. I can't say this name. Kia Magna Bomvik. So I kept touching Angela's arm trying to tell her, like, I, I don't think she can see. And I didn't realize why she didn't pick up on the fact that the woman wasn't looking at the book. What is he known for? Other than... He was prime minister. Yeah. Yes. Did he do anything special? Angela didn't realize, so it was a little uncomfortable. <laughs> You know a lot. Yeah. You know <laughs> okay. Talk oh. pretty open. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Just some talk. Okay. Angela. Yep. Blind. She couldn't see. <laughs> Didn't you see her game? Yeah, but she couldn't see when you said, "What is this?" <laughs> yeah, you gotta pay attention to people. <laughs> when Colby told me that she was blind, I was kind of like, "What?" Like, I didn't really notice. It's okay. It's okay. Everyone was walking around this town with these sticks, like walking sticks. I really, truly thought her stick was just a walking stick. I was truly 110% so embarrassed. But, I mean, another blonde moment, I guess. Flatland from Madison, Wisconsin, and Yorktodal, Telemark. Welcome to my family's house. And this is the room I had in high school. And this is the workout room. This is where you do some like workout activities or something. Here's the downstairs bar, a pool table. And this is better than going to just like an actual theater because it's a little bit more comfortable. Does everything look okay then? Um, yeah, that's all good. For a living, I work with my father and also my mother in the family business. It's a licensed sports distribution company. I do sales and marketing. I honestly really do love working with my family. The Norwegian part of me comes from my dad. All of his grandparents came from Norway. So my dad's 100% Norwegian. They had a large family, they had a lot of kids. I think, I think there was 11. Children out children. of the same person? Yes, from <laughs> Grandpa Old. Gee, wow, <laughs> Flatland family. <laughs> family is a part of who you are. That's why I want to meet my family, because it's knowing more about myself. Mwah. I'm ready for Norway. The better question, is Norway ready for me? Norske amerikanerne befinner sig i Geiranger, hvor de samler information til ukas lagkonkurranse. Vi har bare to og fem minutter. Den kjenge tok en olympisk medal i sailing. Gro. Hun er en strong woman. Strong woman? Ja. Jeg tror at researchen gikk veldig, veldig bra. Vi har fått mye informasjon fra mange forskjellige aldersgrupper av folk. Jeg vil virkelig vinne, ikke bare for min team, men for meg selv. Den kjenge er veldig atletisk. This competition is so important because we could get immunity, all four of us, which is two more weeks closer to meeting my family. It's like out for blood. After pausen får Raquel oppfylle sin bestefars siste ønske. Love you, Grandpa. I'm bringing you back home now. Og norske amerikanernes kunnskapsnivå blir satt på prøve. That doesn't look like a couple. We're gonna win this. Welcome to Norway! Tolv norske amerikanere som aldri før har satt sin fot i modelandet kjemper om å få møte sin norske slekt ved å lære seg mest mulig om Norge og nordmenn. Dette var da sannelig en flott hat. Før pausen fikk de lære om statsministerne og den norske kongefamilien av lokalbefolkningen. Marta, hva gjør hun? She believe in angels. Oh, angels! angels. I can't say this name. Kia Magne Bondvik. I'm so nervous. Nå skal kunnskapen settes på prøve. I den første delen av konkurransen blir det spørrelig. Ready for quiz? Yes. yes. Question one. The former prime minister Kjell Magne Bondvik is from a city where they're called A. Bergensere. 
B. Moldensere. Or C. Strikkegensere. I think so too. It can either be from Bergen, Molda, or that third one. I don't remember that place before. Ever. Mor- Strikke or something. Mor- yeah. I think I think we should go with Bergen because we know it's a yeah. place. Yeah, it's depressed and it's dark and rainy there and that's depressing. Ah, uh, Bergen, Bergen. Maybe. It's dark and rainy there. Yeah. Now let's just hope we're right. Okay, everybody, time's up. Oh, I'm sorry. That's fine. Team Red. We chose A, Bergensia. Team Blue. We chose A as well, Bergensia. And Team White. Team White chose B, Maldesca. B. The correct answer is D. Yeah! Yeah! Our queen Sonia is interested in art, and she has showed her private art collection at a certain gallery. What is the name of the gallery? Is it A. Hendy Unsta Kunstcenter? Is it B. Henning Olsen Kunstcenter? Or is it C. Henny Unsta Kunstcenter? They all sounded the same. <laughs> it's a total crap shoot. I have yeah. no idea. The quiz was tough. I mean, we knew Sonia collects art and puts it on exhibit, but the name of the center, I never in a million years would have think, thought to ask that. And then, of course, all the answers sound almost identical with, like, three letters difference. I was like, oh, I don't know. We just got to go with our gut. Team Red, what is your answer? We chose C. Uh, Hürgen, Dürgen, Bergen, do you? Team Blue. We chose B. Hände Unste Kunstacken. And Team White? Henrietta, we chose B. Erten Unten, what she just said, center. The correct answer is C. Next question. What is King Harald's passion? Is it A, angels, B, horses, or C, sailing? Hera is not A. It's not A. Hera. Let me think. I hope we all go for angels. Absolutely. That's absolutely. I've got a tidbit of information. You Time's up. Team Red. What did you answer? C. Sailing. Team Blue. And the other one was C. Sailing. And Team White, what about you? Team White decided they would go with C. Sailing. The correct answer is. Sea sailing. Yes. Yes. All right. We got one. All right. One. We got one. <laughs> yes! yes. What was Gro Harlem Brundtland's famous saying? Was it A. That er typisk norsk at være god? Was it B. Godt at vi er typisk norske? Or was it C. Norske typer er så gode? Gode. What does the gode mean? I feel like it means like we are Norwegian. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, everybody. Time's up. Team Red. We chose B, Nipta Nepta Norska. Team Blue. We answered B, Tist Norska Gue. Norska. <laughs> and Team White. Team White answered B. Yes, we're Nor. Good things about Nor, eh? The correct answer is A, that typisk Norska Varago. Okay. It means it's typical Norwegian to be good. Typical Norwegian to be good. It's time for the last question. Are you ready? Yes. 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 Our princess, Marta Luisa, and her husband, Ari Ben, they wrote a book together. What is the name of this book? Is it A, Fra Smarta Til Smarta? B, fra hjärta till hjärta, or C, från barte till barte. Hjärta, hjärta, barte, barte. From something to something. So what's hjärta? Fra hjärta. Those questions were really, really hard. 
What does that mean? We thought we were asking the right questions to people in the town, but we did not get that detailed. And a lot of those questions uh, require lots of Norwegian that nobody on our team really had. Time's up. Team Red, what did you answer? We again went with C. Bark to bark to. Team Blue? We went with C. Mas, mata, team mata. And Team White? Well, Henrietta, Team White went with B. The correct answer is... B. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Dang. It's okay. We didn't know it. I am a little disappointed. It was pretty much just guessing, I think, for everybody. And they just got lucky and, and maybe knew one more than us off the top, so... Kudos to them. They did very well. Etter første del av lagkonkurransen leder det hvite laget. Men fortsatt er ingenting avgjort. Siste del av lagkonkurransen er en bildekvist der det gjelder å identifisere de norske statsministerne. Og sette rett hode fra den norske kongefamilien på rett kropp. Det laget som sammenlagt for flest poeng vinner immunitet. Og de kan dermed ikke sendes hjem neste uke. The prize of immunity for next week is of utmost importance because everybody wants to stay. We're all here fighting to meet our family, so it's not like winning, you know, some cash prize. This is way more sentimental and way more meaningful to everyone, so it's like out for blood. Det blå laget som kun har ett poeng fra quizzen er de første som skal i ilden. Klar. Ferdig. Gå. Først skal lagene identifisere statsministerne. This is him. I think it is. Let me, let me, I think this is Jens. Um, let me just make sure. You guys, does he look very young? No, not... But I, I think it's him. I want to say this is Jens. But I, it, it's, either, it's either this or this guy. I recognized an older guy with gray hair, and I thought that must be the prime minister, because I remember seeing him at some point uh, in a newspaper here in Norway. I'm going to try that. I think that's right. Klar. Ferdig. Go. Okay. So. There's President yes. Suryel. Yes. This is Kjell. Kjell. Yep. This is him. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Are you sure? No, but. <laughs> you know what? I'm sure. I was really impressed with Jerry's performance, really. When it came time to focus and game on, she was like, game on. Who do we have left? Sissy. This looks like a picture from a little while ago because these glasses are kind of oldish. Yeah, you think? That could so, be that could be yeah. I vote this. Okay, that's right. my intuition too. Saying that one. Yeah. Okay. You go for it. All right. Let's look now. We got the prime ministers. Think? Yeah. I think that's good. Yeah, that looks good. Klar, ferdig, go. Oh shit! Okay. I motsetning til det røde laget har hvitt lag som leder etter første del av konkurransen til synelatende store problemer med å bestemme seg. Vi må begynne å gjøre noen beslutninger. Oh, no, det er hard. Den fotokvist tok meg for en løp. Jeg var ikke forventet så mange mennesker. Ok, vi har 45 sekunder. Ok, la oss sette denne gangen for glasset. Hvem hadde glasset? Hva var det? Han var bald. Jeg vet ikke. Hva tror du? Ok, vi må Torbjørn. Maybe it's like this guy's got good hair, but does he look political? I don't know. No, no way! Are you kidding me? Got seconds to go. He looks yep. professional. Yeah, Let's him. Ah! Time's up. <laughs> Shit. Om med statsministerne mer eller mindre riktig placert kan norske amerikanerne starte med kongefamilien. All right. This is the king. Yep. That's the king. There's king. This is the queen. There's the queen. <laughs> they look like bobbleheads. This is the prince, the crown prince, and this is his wife. Yep. Okay. Selv om enkelte av kongefamiliens medlemmer er lette å identifisere, viser det seg at når det kommer til Marta og Ari, støter samtlige lag på problemer. Ari. Oh, you can't remember. Look, look for the hippie. Look for a hippie. This could be him. He looks too handsome. I think this is him, because remember that he was like, he's really artsy, he's, he's got like the looks hair. He looks like he a looks model. I don't think that's it. I think it's that. I do. Okay. What do you think? This is his wife. The man in town had said she was very, very beautiful, and so I picked a very beautiful picture, and I thought maybe it kind of looked like the queen a little bit. 
Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> that doesn't look like a couple. Marta. No, no, she's too blonde. She has darker hair. Marta. Marta. Didn't they say reddish brown? That looks reddish brown. That looks blondish brown. I'm guessing her. You take it. Take it. Put it up there. Uh, this one, I don't know. I don't know. The reason I felt like we needed to switch the princess was because one of the people that we talked to said that the princess was very beautiful in her own way, and so I just felt like... <laughs> I feel bad saying that because it's not like the other woman wasn't, like, pretty, but I was like, we gotta go with this, like, beautiful in her own way woman. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I'm almost certain of these two. I'm almost certain of these two. But look at the nose. No? Is, does well, they, not they, they, they're not related. And time's up. Okay. Oh. Oh. oh my gosh. I think that's a very stately royal family right there. What do you guys think? I think it's good. I feel good. Nailed it. I feel Nailed it. really good. Nailed I feel really good. good about it. I was very confident with the royal family. We're gonna win this. <sighs> the two that we were guessing on, Marta and the hippie Art. artist. Yep. <laughs> I, I think right. I think we hit that on the button. The picture competition was was tough, but we at the end of it we were pretty excited and confident that we had him. Whatever. Yeah, good. Yeah, All right, good, good job, guys. Good job, guys. <laughs> I'm proud. Hello, my name is Travis Nordgaard, and I'm a Norwegian American student here at Carleton College in Northfield, Minnesota. I'm Travis Nordgaard, and this is the Carlton Contrarian. I'm a political science major, and I'm extraordinarily interested in American politics. I have my own radio show. Every week I bring on someone new, and we argue politics. I absolutely love it. That's absurd. That's You've absurd. got to be kidding me. I'd love to shoot for the stars uh, and be president, but uh, realistically, uh, being a senator would be, would be great enough for me. I wear that clothes, I look very hot. Good way. 我穿的这件衣服看得很帅 I study Chinese because it's such a useful language in today's global economy but now that I'm heading to Norway I sort of wish that I would have studied Norwegian <laughs> Three of my grandparents are Norwegians and growing up we always took a lot of pride in the fact that we were Norwegians Here is your great 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 grandfather and his family. There's a lot in heritage, and there's a lot in a name, and knowing you know, what's behind that heritage, what's behind that name is, is extremely important. Norske amerikanerne befinner seg i Geiranger, og det er nå klart for resultatet i den aller første lagkonkurransen i Alt for Norge. It's time for the results. Tim White, you did very well in the quiz. However, in the picture part, things were slightly different. Team Red, you placed the heads on the boards with very much confidence. Team White, in the picture part, it seemed more like a wild guessing game for you. I have no idea who's going to win. I know on the quiz we got a couple more points, but there were a lot of pictures. Uh, this one, I don't know. I really think the pictures could totally throw us off. When I add the scores from both parts of the competition, the winner and the team that will be safe from elimination is... Team White! <laughs> You broke your board in happiness. <laughs> Oops, sorry. It seemed like time stood still. I was looking so intensely at Henrietta and holding that board so tight and thinking, don't break it, don't break it, don't break it, don't break it. Team White! I was so on edge. I, honestly, I saw white. Congratulations, guys. Very, you're crying there. Are you so happy? <laughs> I'm over the moon, completely stoked. Norske amerikanerne kan nå gå og feire at de har overlevd sin første uke i Norge. Men ikke Raquel, 
som ska få en lite annan överraskelse. I have a special surprise for you. You know that Ålesund is not far from here and that's the city where your ancestors came from and also the city where your grandfather grew up. And you'll get to visit Ålesund now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are yeah. you going there right now? Yeah, you're going oh, there right now. Awesome. And here is some information about your ancestors and about your grandfather. When I got the letter from Henrietta, I was so many thoughts were going through my mind because I wasn't sure what was going to be told. Dear Raquel, you are now standing outside the house where your grandfather, Peter Christian Rothberg, took his first steps and uttered his first words. It is in this narrow street that his parents live when they became the proud parents of their first baby boy. Shortly afterwards, Peter was blessed with a younger brother, Torleaf, and little sister, Berliot with whom he shared his childhood dreams and memories. I can't believe that I'm right here. I feel almost like um, he's here with me. Raquel får også ta turen til Valderøya for å oppfylle sin bestefars siste ønske. When I saw my grandfather last, he told me that he wanted to spend his last years in Norway where he was born and raised, but he passed in January. My family descendants were all from Valderay, so that is why I'm here today, is to bring him back home where he wanted. I love you, Grandpa. We'll bring you back home now. I was able to spread my grandfather's ashes where all my history and his history is, so that means the world to me. I feel complete and I have just peace and happiness about me. Det nærmer seg slutten av norske amerikanernes første uke i Norge. Og blant de tolv deltakerne er det spesielt en som har utmerket seg. Hello! Hei! Hei! It's time for me to introduce you to this little fellow. Oh! He has been following us around for the past three years, and he has seen and experienced more than anyone else in the Old Fornugge history. Yeah. Every week he's given to someone as a reward, and he can save you from elimination. We give it to someone that has shown exceptional Norwegian sportsmanship and good spirit. And this week, the award goes to a person that always keeps a happy face, never complains. Two years ago, this person fighted for life. And this person's attitude and spirit is to always overcome new challenges. And as an example, he ate meat. <laughs> he ate meat in the lobsters, even though he hadn't been eating meat for 17 years. That's impressive, yes. So, I think you deserve this. The Norwegian Spirit Award goes to Calvin. Yeah. This is the sexiest accessory I've ever seen. I'm very happy. You know, it gives me an opportunity to to stay a little longer, hopefully, and um, but I wish I could pass it on to everyone and, and you know, ha and have them all with me the entire time. Today, nobody's going home, but next week things get serious and one of you will actually have to leave Norway. But for now, cheers for the beginning of your Norwegian adventure. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
Nästa vecka ska amerikanerna få tackla de många utfordringarna den norska vintern har att by på. Damn hurt. I'm gonna die. Och en vill bli den allra första som har förlatte moderlandet. I'm extremely terrified of being the first person to leave off Norge. I'm here to win and I'm here to meet my family so it's life or death.